Welcome to Argar friends. Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here and once again it's time for another Orc Mode Workout. And today was Max Effort Squat Day. It felt a little awkward getting back to squatting after my deload, but we did good. Uh, but you guys know the rules, please click like down below before you watch the PR. Help keep the likes higher than the dislikes. We don't always do that in these vlogs, but you guys who watch these clearly like them, so click like. Now, on to the lifts. Uh, we went ahead and got a 10 pound PR. Okay, now 10 pound means 10 pounds heavier than I have done with this chain weight. And I think on the peak one, I might have sank it an inch deeper. Um, I would need to pull the footage, but last time I did this chain weight with 10 pounds less, the depth was a little high. And I agreed, other people called it, and I said, you know what, you guys are right. Some other coaches called it. Um, and I graciously accepted their criticism. So we have to do that. When other coaches call you, it's not random people on the internet. When it's people who have lifts on the board, they coach other lifters, you listen. Okay. Random people on the internet, you ignore anyone who doesn't post their real legal name, doesn't prove they squat 500, 600, 700 pounds, or coach lifters who do, you should always ignore. Okay. You can ignore those people. They're idiots and their say doesn't matter. When real coaches do, you have to listen. Um, I feel like I got it a hair deeper this time, but 10 pounds more with this weight. So that's what we want to see. We want to get these PRs. Now this was hard. This was a little grindy. All right, we started to see a little bit of form degrading a little bit on that because that was getting heavy for me. I felt like that was all I had. But again, PR. Because remember, I squatted 552 a couple weeks after that. So we're in the next training phase between deloads. So if we start PRing on these different chains now, when we get to that raw weight again in a few weeks, you know, four or five weeks from now, hoping I get another PR. I uh, went ahead and did my hip thrust. I went up five pounds for this because I did the coming back from the deload 425 or five by 10. I went up and bumped it five pounds. I'm gonna see if at least every other workout we can bump this five pounds. Because I've already said, when I can do sets of 10 with this with 500 pounds, I think I'll have my 600 squat. Now, people say, how do you judge that? Well, because this movement uses all the same muscles, develops the muscles of the squat. So when our progressive overload reaches a certain point, we know our strength is increased. So for me, I'm working with 430 right now. With a 550 squat, I need that to go up 10% means when this lift has exceeded 10% more of our work sets, exceeded it, because we probably want to exceed that, we know we're good. Now, people would say, well, that's like 475. Yeah, I'm aware of that. But we want a margin of error. We want to be close to 500. I think when I can hit that, I've got a 600-pound squat. Mainly because you can build your squat with a hip thrust. And this is where people who miss the vlogs miss out. I get people who literally come through and see the peak lifts and I usually ban them for being stupid because I just, I don't abide stupidity anymore. I don't tolerate it. I, I just have no tolerance for stupidity. I just don't, like, I'm just not interested in helping those people. I'm not interested in their opinions if they're, if they're just going to be stupid. All you do is single lifts. No, I do 90% high reps. They don't watch the vlogs. Now, people who only watch the maxes, I really hope people don't think that that's how you build, I build my squat, just doing those singles. That's where we test strength. That's where we build confidence. We do get some training effect from it. But it's all the supplemental work. Now, my hamstrings were a little shot after that, but I realized my, my glute ham raise needs to come in now. I'll say, why? Because the reverse hyper is out for delivery. By the time this video is up, it might already be at my front door. It might already be inside by the time I get this uploaded because uh, it's close by. So I'll have the reverse hyper put together today or tomorrow. I'll start using it. That'll cover my low back. I don't need the good mornings for now. I need to build these glute ham raises. And I'm not going to lie, I haven't done these in just a little while. Went with my lightest band, the first set, my, my hamstring started cramping. I had to adjust my knees, find my angle. I was worried I wasn't going to be able to get five sets. I was like, well, maybe I'll just try to get three. But I got all five by ten. Um, and the last set, I'm like, you know what? I could probably do so, some more reps now that I'm in my groove. But no, I need to build this gradually. I need to be careful with it. 
this is a, a pretty tough exercise and yeah I'll build it up build it up hey maybe we'll get to 5 by 15 with my heavier band the next band up later but we've got to build this slowly um, it's going to be instrumental moving forward I need more hamstring okay I need more hamstring in general and I feel like this lift can bring a lot to both my squat and my deadlift now my training is a little more deadlift specific right now because I know my squat's going to keep climbing Anything that makes my deadlift go up tends to make my squat go up. It's just how it is. So we're going to do this. Helps prevent hamstring tears. Helps build those hamstrings that we can use to kind of bounce out of the bottom of the squat. All right. Helps build my hips. But mainly it, it builds the hamstrings in a way that my other movements don't. One of, the, one of the heads of the hamstring doesn't get fully developed on a hip hinge. It does here. Then I'll be able to do tons of reverse hypers from my low back. Okay. Hip thrust, glute bridges, reverse hypers, glute ham raises, rows. All right, that'll, that'll build my squat and my deadlift, particularly my deadlift. So we're good. Uh, but I got my five sets of this. They were challenging. My hamstrings are a little beat up because my hamstrings were, were a little beat up on that last set of hip thrusts they started getting a little crampy and I had to wait like 10 minutes before I did these then it cramped on the first set but once I got in my groove it quit but they're they're beat up like I'm gonna have doms in the morning uh, micro loaded my pin blades what does that mean I put a fractional plate on each side so I'm doing 5 by 15 now I want to slowly load that up and it doesn't need to load fast it doesn't have to be a weight increase even every week if I can add a fractional plate every month and keep this rep range, I'm talking two and a half pounds. I'll be fine. And the first three sets were easy. Fourth set, I was having to re-grip. It was getting challenging. People say, was it your grip? Well, no, not just my grip. My grip is holding pretty strong now on these. I've built my grip up. My lats were starting to give out. Right? And then the last set, grip was giving out. But set four, my lats... We're, we're struggling to complete the set. So that tells me my grip is now catching up. Arms, forearms, grip, all that is catching up. Now, we keep working it. This axle bar is going to be, for axle bar rows, this is going to be the, the tool that's going to really make my deadlift and my grip. It's helped me tremendously. I mean, this is largely responsible for me pushing past 600 on the deadlift, being able to hold it for a three count at the top. All right, it's a big part of it. So as long as I can keep my grip super strong, I can row with the axle bar indefinitely. I don't need to go back to a normal bar. Get the grip training in. Because now we're getting to where on some of the sets my lats are giving out. Mainly because of how strict I do it. Some people will say, you're not using a lot of weight. My back's bigger than yours. Because of how strict I'm doing it. I can, I can flop around and do sets of 10 with 225. Doesn't work my back more than this does though. It's just cheating. It's just cheating. And I'm not getting all the isometric training from my back. And I can't do as much volume. It's about recovery. Stimulus versus fatigue ratios. This lift dominates. And especially because I'm going so strict, I, ha I, can, I have to use a lighter weight. It lets me be able to work with the axle bar. All right. That brings a whole other dynamic to the table. It brings another dynamic to the table. I would say this is one of those for a home gym guys, $70 well spent for an axle bar. It's literally all this axle bar cost me. 70 bucks. It's a game changer. I'm serious. If you have a home gym, get one. Get one. It is worth every penny of it. You will not regret it. Again, the grip and forearm training, which I desperately need. I need anything for my arms in general, really. I just forearms and grip. And then we finish off with my high rep band curls. And I do more than one set. I just do one set on camera because it's a great time to do it. My biceps are pumped and fatigued from the rows. This kind of finishes them off at the end of the workout. It's a great time to go ahead and hammer them, those band curls. And I've explained before, it's also there to build connective tissue. It's not just about bicep. It's about building the lower tendon that is at risk of tearing on the deadlift. 
If you get your grip as strong as possible, get your technique dialed in, build your tendons up and you don't abuse the wrong drugs, bicep tears are not as common as you would think. Okay. And I did a video for you guys the other day showing how to prevent arm bend. Did a detailed video, a lot of it, it hasn't got as many views as it should, but there are tons of people have said in there already, it's a client tutorial that it's the best deadlift tutorial they've ever seen. Okay, use it. That'll help. We pretty much took these to failure. Um, I'm probably, I'm obviously going to do other forearm or grip work today and at least two more sets of these. But great workout, happy with everything today. So I hope it has been informative and I will talk to you guys next time.